Once upon a time, in Persia, there lived brothers, one named Kasim and the other Ali Baba. Kasim was married to a rich wife and lived in luxury, while Ali Baba had to maintain his wife and children by cutting wood in a neighboring forest and selling it in the town. One day, when Ali Baba was in the forest, he saw a troop of men on horseback coming towards him a cloud of dust. He was afraid they were robbers and climbed onto a tree for safety. When they came up to him and dismounted, he counted 40 of them. They unbridled their horses and tied them to trees. Their leader went towards a cave and shouted, Open sesame! The entrance to the cave opened and the troops entered. They stayed for some time inside while Ali Baba sat patiently on a tree. At last, the door opened again and the forty thieves came out. They all bridled their horses and mounted them after. The door had closed by itself. When they left, Ali Baba climbed down and went towards the cave and shouted, Open sesame! It flew open. To his surprise, he saw loads of gems and diamonds. He brought out as much as he thought his mule could carry and went home. He rode his mule into the yard, shut the gates, carried the money back to his wife and emptied them out before her. He bade her to keep the secret. With Ali Baba's permission, she went to borrow a beam balance from Kasim's wife to measure the gold. Knowing Ali Baba's poverty, his sister-in-law was curious to find out what kind of grain mm -hmm. he and his wife wished to measure. She artfully put some sticky glue at the bottom of the beam balance. After using it, she returned it without noticing that a piece of diamond was taken to it. When Kasim's wife saw this, she grew very curious and said to Kasim when he returned, Your brother is now richer than you. He no longer counts his money. He measures it. Kasim grew so envious that he could not sleep and went to Ali Baba in the morning before sunrise. Ali Baba, he said, showing him the peace. You pretend to be poor, and yet you measure diamonds. By this, Ali Baba perceived that through his wife fully, Kasim and his wife knew their secret, so he confessed all and offered Kasim. That I expect, said Kasim, but I must know where to find the treasure, otherwise I will discover all and you will lose all. Ali Baba, more out of kindness than fear, told him of the cave and the very words to use. Kasim left Ali Baba, meaning to beforehand with him and get the treasure for himself. He rose early the next morning and set out with ten meals loaded with huge bags. He soon found a place and the door in the rock, he said, open sesame, and the door opened and shut behind him. He could have feasted his eyes all day on the treasure. But he now hastened to gather together as much of it as possible. But when he was ready to go, he did not remember what to say for thinking of his great riches. Instead of sesame, he said, open barely, and the door remained closed. He named several different sorts of Grain, all but the right one. 
and the door still stuck fast. He was so frightened at the danger he was in that he had as much forgotten the word as if he had never heard it. About noon, the robbers returned to the cave and saw Kasim's mules with huge bags on their backs. This gave them the alarm. They drew their daggers and went to the door, which opened on their captains, saying, Open Sesame! Kasim, who had heard the trampling of their horses' feet, resolved to sell his life dearly. So, when the door opened, he leapt out and threw the captain down. In vain, however, the robbers with their daggers soon killed him. On entering the cave, they saw all the bags laid ready and could not imagine how someone had got in without knowing their secret. They cut Cassin's body into four quarters and nailed them up inside the cave to frighten anyone who should venture again and they left in search of more treasure. As night drew on, Kasim's wife grew very uneasy and ran to her brother-in-law and told him where her husband had gone. Ali Baba did his best to comfort her and set out to the forest in search of Kasim. The first thing he saw on entering the cave was his dead brother. Full of horror, he put the body on one of his mules and bags of gold on the other two and covering all with some faggots, returned home. He drove the two mules laden with gold into his yard and led the other to Kasim's house. The door was opened by the slave Morgiana, whom he knew to be both brave and cunning. Unloading the mule, he said to her, This is the body of your master, who has been murdered, but whom we must bury as though he had died in his bed. I will speak with you again, but now tell your mistress I have come. The wife of Kasim, on learning the fate of her husband, broke out into cries and tears. But Ali Baba offered to take her to live with him and his wife if she would promise to keep his counsel and leave everything to Morgiana, whereupon she agreed and dried her eyes. Morgiana, meanwhile, went to a doctor and asked him for medicine. My poor master, she said, can neither eat nor speak, and no one knows what his his temper is. is. She carried home the medicine and returned the next day, weeping, and asked for an essence only given to those just about to die. Thus, in the evening, no one was surprised to hear the wretched shrieks and cries of Kasim's wife and Morgiana, telling everyone that Kasim had passed on. The day after, Morgiana went to an old cobbler near the gates of that town, who opened his stall early put on a piece of gold in his hands and bade him to follow her with his needle and thread. Having bound his eyes with a handkerchief, she took him to the room where the body lay, pulled off the bandage and asked him to sew the quarters together, after which she covered his eyes again and led him home. Then they buried Kasim and Morgiana, 
his slave followed him to the grave, weeping and tearing her hair, while Cassim's wife stayed at home crying. The next day, she went to live with Ali Baba, who gave Cassim's shop to his eldest son. The forty thieves, on their return to the cave, were much astonished to find Cassim's body gone and some of their money bags. We have certainly been discovered, said the captain, and shall be undone if we don't find out who it is that knows our secret. Two men must have known it. We have killed one. We must now find the other. To this end, one of you, who is bold and artful, must go into the city dressed as a traveler and discover whom we have killed and whether men talk of the strange manner of his death. If the messenger fails, he must lose his life lest we be betrayed. One of the thieves started up and offered to do this, and after the rest had highly commended him for his bravery, he disguised himself and happened to enter the town at daybreak just by Baba Mustafa's stall. The thief bade him good day, saying, Honest man, how can you possibly see to stitch at your age? Old as I am, replied the cobbler, I have very good eyes. And will you believe that I saw a dead body together in a place where I had less light than I have now? The robber was overjoyed at his good fortune and giving him a piece of gold, desired to be shown the house where he stitched up the dead body. At first, Mustafa refused, saying that he had been blindfolded. But when the robber gave him another piece of gold, he began to think he might remember the penance if blindfolded as before. This means he succeeded. The robber partly led him and was partly guided by him, right in front of Kasim's house, the door of which the robber marked with a piece of chalk. Then, well pleased, he bade farewell to Baba Mustafa and returned to the forest. By and by, Morgiana, going out, saw the mark the robber had made. Quickly guessed that some mischief was brewing and fetching a piece of chalk marked all the doors in the alley without saying anything to her master or mistress. The thief, in the meantime, told his comrades of his discovery. The captain thanked him and asked him to show him the house he had marked. But when they came to it, they saw that all the houses in the alley were chalked in the same manner. The guide was so confounded that he knew not what answer to make. And when they returned, he was at once beheaded for having failed. Another robber, dispatched and having won over Baba Mustafa, marked the house in red chalk. But Morgana again, being too clever for them, the second messenger was put to death also. The captain now resolved to go himself, but wiser than the others, he did not mark the house, but looked at it so closely that he could not fail to remember it. He returned and ordered his men to go into the neighboring villages and buy 19 mules and 38 barrels, all empty except one, which was full of oil. The captain put on his watch out for part two and let's find together 
whether the mischievous captains plan succeeds against Alibaba. Till then, stay tuned and subscribe to the channel. late.